Hi everyone. This lecture is about the effect of external magnetic field on atomic spectra. I am very sure that this will be a very useful video for you all because I am incorporating maximum details in a systematic way. So the topic is effect of external magnetic field on spectral lines of atoms. We are going to study the interaction of magnetic moment and external magnetic field. Before going to study the details, I will give you few fundamental concepts. Every atom consists of electrons and each electron possesses two types of angular momentum orbital angular momentum as well as spin angular momentum. Also for each electron there are two types of magnetic moment. One is orbital magnetic moment, the other one is spin magnetic moment. If you add vectorially these quantities for each electron, you will get the corresponding quantity for the atom. Okay. Now. These are the two types of angular momentum for electrons. One is orbital angular momentum and quantum mechanically the magnitude of orbital angular momentum is given by capital L is square root of L into L plus 1 H cut where this small L represents the orbital angular momentum quantum number. It can take values 0, 1, 2, 3 etc. Spin angular momentum is the second type of angular momentum that is possessed by electron and it is given by s equal to square root of s into s plus 1 h cut. Here this smallest represents spin angular momentum quantum number and for electron its value is half. Okay. Now the two types of magnetic moment for electrons are one is orbital magnetic moment, the other one is spin magnetic moment. Coming to orbital magnetic moment, it is represented by mu L. If I represent mu L vector, then it is given by minus G L E by 2 M into vector L. This vector L is orbital angular momentum and this minus E represents charge of electron electron charge is negative that is why this negative sign m is uh, mass of electron gl gl is known as landage factor for orbital motion and its value is 1 coming to spin magnetic moment it is represented as mu s again its value is minus gs e by 2m into vector s this is spin angular momentum GS is landage factor for spin motion and its value is 2. These values are actually obtained experimentally. Landage factor for orbital motion is 1 and landage factor for spin motion is 2. What is the exact meaning of that? If you have angular momentum vector L that is represented by this black arrow, then if this e by 2m if this e by 2m is suppose it is 2 then mu l will have twice the length of this arrow okay l multiplied by gl into e by 2m will give you mu l but its direction will be opposite due to this negative side so this is representation vectorial representation of l as well as mu l coming to s and mu s this s and mu s will be opposite due to this negative sign but due to the effect of this landage factor as 2 the length will be twice if you compared with this mu l here if i take e by 2 mass 2 then the length of mu l is twice as that of l but here gs is again 2 so 2 into 2 4 so mu s will be 4 times the length of s. Okay, that is the effect of landage factor for spin motion 
so this is the vectorial representation of l and mu l and this is about s and mu s okay so for an electron there are two types of angular momentum l as well as s and there are two types of magnetic moment mu l as well as mu s these are the relation connecting this okay now what is the importance of both angular momentum as well as magnetic moment suppose you have an object which is having only a magnetic moment mu if you place that object in a uniform magnetic field which is pointing upward if you place the magnetic moment like this in this magnetic field what will happen you are placing a magnetic dipole in a magnetic field then there will be a torque and that torque is given by mu cross b this torque will try to rotate this magnetic moment and finally this magnetic moment will come parallel to the magnetic field then the torque will be zero okay so what is the direction of this torque mu cross b rotate your right hand from mu to b so thumb will point into the plane of the board that is the direction of torque and due to that torque this mu will rotate in this manner okay in this manner dotted arrow line and it will eventually come parallel to b that is the effect when you place an object which is having only a magnetic moment in a uniform magnetic field okay now consider another object which is having both a magnetic moment as well as an angular moment okay this object have an angular momentum l as well as an angular sorry magnetic moment mu what will happen since it has a magnetic moment mu and there is a uniform magnetic field b there will be definitely a torque and that torque is given by mu cross b and from newton's second law since there is an angular momentum l this torque tau will try to change that l so you can write tau is equal to dl by dt dl by dt is rate of change of angular momentum and that will be equal to tau so this torque will try to change this already existing angular momentum in the previous case there is no uh, angular momentum initially so this torque will try to produce an angular momentum by rotating this mu and finally it will come parallel to b but in the second case there is already an angular momentum so the torque will try to change that angular momentum instead of producing a new angular momentum this torque will try to change this angular momentum so what happens is the torque is into the plane of the board so this angular momentum will try to move into the plane of the board when it try to move into the plane of the board again the direction of torque is always perpendicular to mu because mu cross b the direction of mu cross b is always perpendicular to mu and b torque is always perpendicular to mu means torque is always perpendicular to l because mu and l always in a plane so when l try to move into the plane torque will follow it so the motion will be actually a precision a precisional motion this angular momentum vector l will precess around the direction of magnetic field this precision is known as larmor precision precision of angular momentum vector and hence the magnetic moment vector around the direction of magnetic field is known as larmor precision there will not be any change in this angle theta this l will simply precess around b okay that is the case when you have an object having both magnetic moment as well as angular moment okay so l precess around b now <clears throat> this precision is known as larmor precision and that is nothing but the precision of l around b and what is the frequency of that precision we can calculate that frequency by taking the rate of change of this angle phi this angle phi is uh, defined on this circle and what is the radius of that circle what is the radius of that circle that is formed by the tip of angular momentum vector 
that is simply L sin theta because this length is L, this angle is theta, so this opposite side becomes L sin theta. L sin theta is making an angle phi on this rotation. If this small angle is d phi from the definition angle equal to arc by radius, from the definition angle equal to arc by radius, you can write d phi as dl divided by radius is l sin theta. What is dl? dl is actually the change of l. Here, initially the l vector is like this. After some time, l vector will be like this. Magnitude is same, but direction changes. Then, if you have two vectors, one is like this and the another one is like this, then the change is represented by this length. So, here this arc length uh, is approximately equal to chord and chord is nothing but dl. So, d phi is equal to dl by radius is l sin theta. What is d phi by dt then? 1 by l sin theta into dl by dt. dl by dt is nothing but torque. Torque is mu b sin theta. Magnitude of torque is mu b sin theta because it is mu cross b. Magnitude is mu b sin theta. And uh, mu, in the case of orbital angular momentum, mu is given by g l e by 2m. g e by 2m. g is land age factor. Into l. Okay. Mu is g e by 2m into l. So, substitute for mu. And cancel the l sin theta. Call this g e by 2m as gyromagnetic ratio. g e by 2m is known as gyromagnetic ratio. It is represented as gamma. So, the Larmor position frequency omega is nothing but gamma b. As the field strength increases, the frequency of precision will increase. Frequency of precision will increase. So, the frequency of precision depends on uh, magnetic field strength as well as gamma gyromagnetic ratio okay so this is all about larmor position now what is the interaction energy what is the interaction energy when you have a magnetic moment mu which is placed in a uniform magnetic field b the interaction energy is given by minus mu dot b if it is orbital magnetic moment, you can write it as minus mu l dot b. But mu l is minus g l e by 2 m into l dot b. L dot b, here the direction of magnetic field is upward, l is in this direction, angle between mu uh, b and l is theta. So l dot b, you can write it as l b cos theta. So, G L E by 2 m into L cos theta. What is L cos theta? You can name it as L z. If you are right taking the upward direction as z, then the component of L in the direction of z is represented as L z. L z. And according to spatial quantization, according to spatial quantization, the angular momentum vector of an electron cannot take arbitrary directions. It can take only those directions such that the projection on any arbitrary direction is ml h cut where ml is minus l to plus l for example if you are taking l as 1 ml can take minus 1 0 and plus 1 so this l can point only in three directions one is already i drawn here and the another one is this one and another one is this one these three are the possible directions if you take L is equal to 1. Okay. So, what is LZ? LZ is the projection of L along this reference direction. L cos theta. This is theta. So, L cos theta is nothing but LZ. So, L cos theta you can write it as LZ into this B. Now, LZ is ML H cut where ML is magnetic orbital angular momentum quantum number magnetic orbital angular momentum quantum number ml into h cut e h cut by 2m e h cut by 2m that is nothing but e h by 4 pi m it is known as bohr magneton bohr magneton usually it is represented as mu b and it is given by 9.27 into 10 to the power minus 24 joules per tesla okay so substituting all these you will get interaction energy e is equal to gl ml mu b b 
ജി എൽ എം എൽ മ്യൂ ബി ബി ദിസ് ഈസ് ദ ഇൻ്ററാക്ഷൻ എനർജി വെൻ യു ഹാവ് അൻ ഇലക്ട്രോൺ വിച്ച് ഈസ് ഹാവിങ് അൻ ആംഗുലാർ മൊമെൻറ്റം എൽ ആൻഡ് മാഗ്നറ്റിക് മൊമെൻറ്റ് മ്യൂ എൽ ഇസ് പ്ലേസ്ഡ് ഇൻ അൻ എക്സ്റ്റേണൽ മാഗ്നറ്റിക് ഫീൽഡ് ദിസ് ഈസ് ദ ഇൻട്രാക്ഷൻ എനർജി ഓക്കെ സൊ ഫോർ ഓർബിറ്റൽ മോഷൻ വി ഓൾറെഡി ഒബ്ടൈൻഡ് ഇ ആസ് ജി എൽ എം എൽ മ്യൂ ബി ബി ഐ വിൽ ഗീവ് യു വൺ എക്സാമ്പിൾ If you have angular momentum, quantum number L is equal to 1, then ML can have three possibilities, 1, 0 and minus 1. GL, land age factor for orbital motion is 1. So E becomes, GL is 1, ML if you take it as 1, then you will get mu BB plus mu BB. If you take ML as 0, you will get 0. If you take ML as minus 1, you will get minus mu BB. So, in presence of a magnetic field with the field l equal to 1 level will split into 3 one at mu b b position the other one at zero position the other one at minus mu b b position this is a no field condition on applying an external magnetic field that level will split into 3 okay this is the effect of a magnetic field on a particular level with the l equal to 1 If you have L equal to 2 level, then it becomes split into 5. If you have an L equal to 3 level, it will split into 7 and so on. Now, if you consider the spin motion, the interaction energy you can derive in a similar manner and that will be Gs ms mu b b, where Gs is land age factor for spin motion, ms is uh, the magnetic spin angular moment and quantum number. mu b is bohr magneton b is external magnetic field for example if you consider a single electron system then s is equal to half ms is equal to plus half and minus half gs land age factor for spin motion it is 2 then e have two values gs is 2 ms is uh, plus half that will give you mu b b gs is 2 ms is minus half that will give you minus mu b b so without field this is a single level with the field that will split into two one at plus mu b b and the other one at minus mu b b okay now since an electron have two types of angular momentum that is orbital angular momentum and spin angular momentum it is possible to define a total angular momentum and hence a total magnetic moment also what is total angular momentum you have l you have s then the total angular moment of the electron will be the vector sum of these two according to parallelogram law of vector addition that will be the diagonal of the parallelogram and that is denoted by this yellow arrow j this is l this is s this is the resultant j okay once you have an l then you can define a mu l mu l is minus e by 2m into l because the land age factor is 1 once you have s you can define a mu s mu s is but minus 2e by 2m into s this 2 is land age factor for spin motion so if i take this uh, length as 3 and this as 4 then mu l is 4 by 3 times l 4 by 3 times l then mu s will be 8 by 3 times s 8 by 3 times s because there is an additional 2 okay if i take this as 3 units this as 4 units then mu l is actually 4 by 3 times this then mu s should be 8 by 3 times s that is the uh, point in writing 2 here land age factor for spin motion is 2 that is why uh, this diagram is like this so mu l is this length mu s is this length if i take the parallelogram law of vector addition for mu l and mu s i will get this yellow arrow but this is not exactly opposite to j this is not exactly opposite to j then i cannot write an x equation like this mu j is equal to minus of some constant into j if i want to write an expression like this mu j should be exactly opposite to j but the resultant of l and s is in this direction 
resultant of mu l and mu s is in this direction they are not opposite j and this vector are not opposite so i cannot write a relation like this for writing a relation like this for writing or for expressing a magnetic moment which is exactly opposite to j what we can do is take the component of mu l opposite to j take the component of mu s opposite to j and add those two in order to find mu j okay in order to get a mu j which is exactly opposite to j take the component of mu l opposite to j take the component of mu s opposite to j what is component of mu l opposite to j that is mu l cos lj where open bracket lj denotes the angle between l and j open bracket sj denotes the angle between s and j then component of mu s opposite to j is mu s cos sj then you can add these two quantities in order to write mu j mu j is mu l cos lj plus mu s cos sj this mu j will be opposite to j and i can write a relation like this mu j equal to minus g j e by 2m into j provided mu j is mu l cos l j plus mu s cos s j that is equal to minus g j into e by 2m j okay substitute for mu l it is minus g l into e by 2m l substitute for mu s it is minus g s e by 2m into s hmm, this thing is as such cancel all uh, e by 2m cancel the negative sign the remaining is l cos lj plus 2s cos sj equal to gj into j because gs is 2 gl is 1 okay from here gj is 1 by j take this j to this left hand side into l cos lj plus 2s cos sj call this as equation 1 okay now we have to apply cosine law consider this uh, parallelogram this is a uh, l this is s and this is resultant j you can consider two triangles here one is oab oab and consider this angle lj from this triangle oab if you apply cosine law if you apply cosine law to this side this side is actually same as s so s square this side square is equal to l square plus j square minus 2lj cos of angle between two, these two sides that is cosine law for triangle oab becomes s square equal to l square plus j square minus 2lj cos lj this is not parallelogram law of vector addition this is cosine law that you are all familiar with so from here you can write l cos lj as l square plus j square minus s square by 2j in a similar manner, you can apply cosine law for triangle OBC, triangle OBC, this side square, this side is same as this side. So, L square is S square plus J square minus 2SJ cos SJ. Therefore, 2S cos SJ equal to S square plus J square minus L square divided by J. Substitute these two values in equation 1, in equation 1, then you will get GJ equal to 1 by j l square plus j square minus s square by 2j s square plus j square minus l square by j so you can take a lcm as 2j take that outside that becomes 2j square into when you take lcm <coughs> here you will have a 2 so 2j square plus j square that becomes 3j square 2 s square minus s square becomes s square minus 2l square plus l square becomes minus l square this 3j square you can split into 2j square plus j square then 2j square by 2j square will give you 1 then the remaining j square plus s square minus l square by 2j square what is uh, the angular momentum magnitude according to quantum mechanics l is j into j uh, not j l into l plus 1 small l into l plus 1 h cut Similarly, S is smallest into S plus 1 H cut. So J is small J into J plus 1 H cut. Substituting these values, you will get capital J square as J into J plus 1. H cut square will cancel from both numerator and denominator. 
remaining is j instead of j square you can have j into j plus 1 instead of s square you will have s into s plus 1 minus l into l plus 1 divided by 2 j into j plus 1 this is landage factor for total angular momentum okay so total motion uh, landage factor for total motion is gj and it is uh, 1 plus j into j plus 1 plus s into s plus 1 minus l into l plus 1 by 2j into j plus 1. So, I will summarize these things. We have orbital motion, spin motion and the total motion. For orbital motion, the quantum number is orbital angular momentum quantum number. It is L. It can take value 0, 1, 2, etc. In presence of magnetic field, the magnetic orbital angular momentum will come and it can have values ml is equal to minus l to plus l landage factor gl is 1 interaction energy is gl ml mu b b as an example you can consider l equal to 1 case ml can have 1 0 minus 1 values gl is 1 so the possible energies are minus mu b b 0 mu b b in the case of spin motion for an atom with a single electron, it can have value half. For two electrons, it can have value 1 or 0. For three electrons, it can have values 3 by 2, etc. So, in general, it can have values half, 1, 3 by 2, etc. It can also have value 0. Okay. Ms can have values from minus s to plus s. Landage factor Gs is 2. Interaction energy is Gs Ms mu bb. As an example, you can consider S equal to half. Ms can have values half and minus half. Gs is 2. So, the interaction energies are minus mu bb and plus mu bb. Okay. What about total motion? Total angular momentum quantum number which is represented by small j. It can have values mod L plus s to mod L minus s. Mod L plus s to mod L minus s. Mj can have values minus j to plus j. And landage factor is 1 plus j into j plus 1 plus s into s plus 1 minus l into l plus 1 divided by 2j into j plus 1. Interaction energy is gj mj mu bb. As an example, if you take l equal to 1 and s equal to half, j can have 1 plus half to 1 minus half. So, 1 plus half is 3 by 2, 1 minus half is half. Total two values possible, 3 by 2 and 1 by 2. When you take j equal to 3 by 2, mj can have values minus 3 by 2, minus 1 by 2, 1 by 2, 3 by 2. All these values have spacing unity. Minus 3 by 2, minus 1 by 2, 1 by 2, 3 by 2. gj, if you are calculating gj values for j equal to 3 by 2, then j into j plus 1 becomes 3 by 2 into 5 by 2, s into s plus 1 becomes half into 3 by 2, l into l plus 1 becomes 1 into 2 divided by 2 j into j plus 1 and if you solve this that will result 4 by 3 so gj value is 4 by 3 gj value is 4 by 3 substituting here gj is 4 by 3 if you take mj as minus 3 by 2 you will get minus 2 mu bb for gj 4 by 3 and mj minus 1 by 2 you will get minus 2 by 3 mu bb for gj 4 by 3 and mj half you will get 2 by 3 mu bb for gj 4 by 3 and mj 3 by 2 you will get 2 mu bb 2 mu bb okay so this is uh, all about the fundamental aspects for studying the effect of uh, external magnetic field now we will consider the first case that is known as normal seaman effect normal seaman effect it is defined as the splitting up of a spectral line into three in presence of an external magnetic field okay splitting up of a spectral line into three lines in presence of an external magnetic field okay so how can we explain this consider the transition between spin zero levels okay in an atom you can have different spectral terms i'm not going into the details term symbol is written as 2s plus 1 lj for an atom term symbol is defined as 2s plus 1 lj here s is the total spin quantum number 
Capital L is the total orbital angular momentum quantum number. Capital J is total angular momentum quantum number. If you consider the level with capital S zero, then the term symbols have left top as one. Okay, so one as zero, one p one, one d two, one f three, one g four. For all these levels, capital S is zero, and all these levels are known as singlet levels. Singlet levels. So consider a transition between two singlet levels. For example. A transition between one p one and one as zero. A transition between one p one and one as zero. Without any external magnetic field, this transition will produce a spectrum which is a single line, single line. When this atom makes a transition from one p one level to one as zero level, there will be an emission. You will get a spectral line at a particular position. At a particular position. Okay. Now, in presence of an external magnetic field, what will happen? It is having only orbital angular momentum. The spin angular momentum is zero because we are considering spin zero levels. So we are considering only the orbital angular momentum L and orbital magnetic moment mu L. Interaction energy E. Is given by G L M L mu B B. G L M L mu B B. For one as zero state, the ground state, one as zero state, L is equal to zero because this S represents L value zero, P represents L value one, D represents L value two, and so on. So S represents L value zero. M L value, the only possible value is zero. G L is always one. Because this is only orbital motion, interaction energy E is G L M L mu B B and it is zero. So the lower level one as zero level is uh, remain as such. One P one L value is one. M L can have three values minus one, zero, and one. G L is one. So en energy interaction energy is G L M L mu B B. So it becomes minus mu B B. So that level will be. Uh, mu b b in the downward direction zero and there is a mu b b upward direction so corresponding to m l equal to plus one it is plus mu b b m l equal to zero it is the same position as the original line then minus mu b b for m l equal to minus one so this represents m l values so this is without field a single line with the field that will be Split into three. Why? Because there are certain selection rules. Okay. In order to define a spectra, we have to define selection rules. For normal Seaman effect, the selection rule is delta m l equal to zero plus or minus one. So here, when you consider a transition from this state m l equal to one to zero, that is a possible transition because delta m l is plus one. For this red line, delta m l is plus one. Okay, for this red transition, delta m l is plus one. For the black one, delta m l is zero because m l zero to m l zero. For uh, this green line, delta m l is minus one. Okay, so you can have three transition corresponding to delta m l equal to plus one, delta m l equal to zero, delta m l equal to minus one. These are the three lines, and in that. This black one corresponds to delta m l equal to zero. Will have the same frequency as the original line. That is, without magnetic field, you have a line, and with the magnetic field, there are three lines. But this black one will be in the same position as the line with the uh, without any magnetic field. Okay, and that line is known as pi line. That is known as pi line, and. Uh, A line will be on the right, which is having a shift of mu b b, and a line will be on the left that is also it is facing mu b b. So there will be two symmetrically placed lines. One corresponds to delta m l equal to plus one, and one corresponds to delta m l equal to minus one. These two are known as sigma lines. So there are total three lines in presence of a magnetic field. One in the Actual position and one in the higher position and one in the lower position. 
the spacing between two lines is mu b b and in the three lines the line corresponds to delta m l equal to 0 is known as pi line the line corresponds to delta m l equal to plus or minus 1 is known as sigma lines so this is the explanation of normal seaman effect so this is shown by atoms having zero spin if you consider another example a transition from 1 d2 to 1 p1 again two singlet states 1 d2 and 1 p1 without any magnetic field it is simply a single transition it is simply a single transition and you will get a single line in the spectrum without any magnetic field you are having a single spectral line in presence of magnetic field what happens this 1p1 ground state will split into three because 1p1 means l equal to 1 gl is always 1 because it is simply an orbital motion ml can have three values 1 0 minus 1 e is equal to gl ml mu bb and substituting for gl as 1 and ml as 1 0 minus 1 you will get minus mu bb 0 mu bb these are the three possible energies so this 1p1 line in presence of field will split into three corresponds to plus 1 0 and minus 1 corresponds to ml value plus 1 0 and minus 1 there will be three lines what about 1 d2 for 1 d2 l value is 2 gl value is 1 ml can have values 2 1 0 minus 1 minus 2 5 values total 5 possible values therefore 5 possible energies minus 2 mu bb minus mu bb 0 mu bb 2 mu bb so 1 d2 level will split into 5 in presence of a magnetic field here i represented the ml values for each of these lines now according to selection rule we can have delta ml equal to plus or minus 1 or 0 so from ml equal to plus 2 you can have a transition to ml equal to plus 1 because that uh, corresponds to delta ml equal to plus 1 from ml plus 2 to ml 0 not possible ml plus 2 to ml minus 1 not possible so from the top level there is only one transition from ml equal to plus 1 level you can have a transition to ml equal to 0 and you can have a transition to ml equal to plus 1 also okay so that is why two lines starting from this line so similarly you can analyze different spectral lines and the first three red lines corresponds to delta ml equal to plus 1 the next three black lines corresponds to delta ml equal to 0 the next three green lines corresponds to delta ml equal to minus 1 interestingly all the three red lines have the same energy because in the starting there is a gap of this much mu bb ending also there is a gap of mu bb so first and second line have the same energy in the same case for the third line also so the three red lines have same energy three black lines have same energy three green lines have same energy so even though there are nine transitions there will be only three spectral lines one in the original position and two shifted ones one in the lower side and one in the higher side and the spacing is again mu bb so there is one pi line and two sigma lines so whenever you have a transition between two singlet states in presence of a magnetic field that will split into three this is known as normal seaman effect and the spacing between seaman lines is mu bb mu bb there are a lot of questions asked for csar net exam based on this concept okay now <clears throat> i will define the second effect which is anomalous seaman effect anomalous seaman effect this is splitting of a spectral line into more than three components in presence of an external weak magnetic field okay splitting up of a spectral line into more than three components in presence of an external weak magnetic field okay it happens for atoms with a non-zero spin non-zero spin so as an example consider the sodium d line sodium d line in presence of magnetic field you know that as per Sommerfield atom model as per Sommerfield atom model sodium d line means a single line 
and that corresponds to a transition from 3p to 3s here 3 represents principal contact number 3p to 3s transition will give you a single d line as per sommerfeld theory but experimentally observed lines are two d lines two closely spaced d lines one at 5896 angstrom and one at one at 5890 angstrom these are the experimentally observed lines in order to explain this observation we are using spin orbit interaction and as a result of spin orbit interaction this 3p line will split into two one is 2p 3 by 2 and 2p half this two is actually multiplicity not a principal quantum number this is on the left top this is on the left side this is principal quantum number so any p level under the effect of spin orbit interaction will split into p3 by 2 and p half since there are two levels we will denote that as multiplicity on the top of left that is 2p3 by 2 and 2p half this is the effect of spin orbit interaction and uh, this 3s level will be uh, remain as 2s half even though there is a 2 on the top this is actually a singlet state so in spin orbit interaction there are two upper level and one lower level so the transition will be from upper 2p 3 by 2 to 2s half or from 2p half to 2s half they are respectively known as d1 and d2 d1 and d2 d1 line at 5896 angstrom and d2 line at 5890 angstrom okay so this is a sodium d lines and this is without any external magnetic field okay this splitting is due to the internal effect oh actually i made a mistake here actually this 2p 3 by 2 to 2s half line is named as d1 and 2p half to 2s half line is named as d2 that is the naming 2p half to Uh, 2s half is d2 so it is having a low energy and its wavelength will be high and d2 is having high wavelength so this is 5896 and d1 is 5890 okay that is the naming d1 is transition between 2p 3 by 2 to 2s half it is having a higher energy and lower wavelength 5890 D2 is 2p half to 2s half it is having lower energy and high wavelength 5896 angstrom so without any magnetic field external magnetic field the sodium d line is actually two closely spaced lines and both are yellow in color i think you are all familiar with this when you look at uh, sodium vapor lamp through a spectrometer you can see two closely spaced yellow lines if you apply an external magnetic field what will happen to these lines what will happen to these lines we have to look at it consider this 2p 3 by 2 level 2p 3 by 2 level s value is half because the term symbol representation is 2s plus 1 lj instead of 2s plus 1 here you have 2 that means s value is half since it is p <coughs> p l value is 1 so j is 3 by 2 that is also given j is 3 by 2 given s equal to half l equal to 1 j equal to 3 by 2 you can calculate gj gj that is 1 plus j into j plus 1 plus s into s plus 1 minus l into l plus 1 divided by 2j into j plus 1 substituting these three values and solving you will get gj as 4 by 3 mj value For j is 3 by 2, mj is 3 by 2, 1 by 2 minus 1 by 2 minus 3 by 2. So the energy values are for gj 4 by 3, mj 3 by 2. You will get 2 mu bb because the equation is gj mj mu bb. For gj 4 by 3, mj 1 by 2. You will get 2 by 3 mu bb. For gj 4 by 3, mj minus 1 by 2. You will get minus 2 by 3 mu bb. For gj 4 by 3 and mj minus 3 by 2. You will get minus 2 mu bb. these are the four uh, possible energies in presence of a magnetic field for this level for 2p half a similar calculation s equal to half l equal to 1 j equal to half 
gj you will get as 2 by 3 mj values minus half and plus half you will get minus 1 by 3 mu bb plus 1 by 3 mu bb so 2p half level will split into 2 what about 2s half s equal to half l value 0 because this is s l is equal to 0 j equal to half this value so gj if you substitute here these three values you will get gj as 2 mj values for j equal to half mj values are half and minus half then interaction energy will be mu bb and minus mu bb what is selection rule for anomalous seaman effect this delta mj equal to 0 plus or minus 1 delta mj okay okay so you have 2p 3 by 2 level 2p 1 by 2 level 2s half level 2p 3 by 2 will split into 4 corresponding to mj 3 by 2 1 by 2 minus 1 by 2 minus 3 by 2 2p half split into 2 corresponding to mj plus half minus half 2s half split into 2 corresponding to mj plus half minus half now look at the spacing the spacing to mj equal to 3 by 2 level is 2 mu bb from the base level the spacing to mj equal to 3 by 2 is 2 mu bb spacing to mj equal to half is 2 by 3 2 by 3 is 0.67 mu bb and below it is minus 0.67 and minus 2 mu bb in the case of 2p half the spacing is simply 1 by 3 mu bb and minus 1 by 3 mu bb it's just 0.33 okay this one box is actually mu bb so 1 by 3 mu bb and minus 1 by 3 mu bb that is the splitting of 2p half you have to be very careful in drawing these lines the spacing should be very uh, correct 2s half that will be split into mu bb as well as minus mu bb so it will be exactly one uh, box okay now According to selection rule, you can have a transition from mj equal to 3 by 2 level to mj equal to half because delta mj is plus 1. But mj 3 by 2 to mj minus half is not possible. mj 1 by 2 to mj 1 by 2 possible. mj 1 by 2 to mj minus 1 by 2 also possible. mj minus 1 by 2 to mj plus 1 by 2 possible. mj minus 1 by 2 to mj minus 1 by 2 possible mj minus 3 by 2 to mj 1 by 2 possible but the other one is not possible i think i made a mistake uh, this is not the actual one possible mj uh, minus 3 by 2 to mj plus 1 by 2 is not possible because delta mj becomes uh, minus 2 but this level is possible minus 3 by 2 to minus 1 by 2 so there are six transitions, six possible transitions. All of them will have different energy. So this, this D line will split into six. What about this D line? This will split into four. Plus one by two to plus one by two, plus one by two to minus one by two, minus one by two to plus one by two, minus one by two to minus one by two. So that will split into four. So the sodium D lines will split into 10 lines in presence of a weak magnetic field. In presence of a weak magnetic field. This is known as anomalous Seaman effect. Anomalous Seaman effect. Okay. What is the last one? It is passion back effect. Passion back effect. It is splitting up of a spectral line in presence of a strong magnetic field. Splitting up of a spectral line in presence of a strong magnetic field in weak magnetic field we have anomalous seaman effect what will happen if the field is strong if b is strong enough such that l and s interacts b interacts with b separately rather than the resultant of resultant j of l and s interacts with b what is the meaning suppose your l and s interacts to give g interacts to give j total angular momentum this happens if the field is very weak if the external field is very weak the interaction between these l and s will dominate and they will interact together to form a j and that j will interact with b that is the case with anomalous seaman effect but if the external field is very strong then there is no provision for 
the interaction between L and S or the interaction between L and S is negligibly small compared with the individual interaction of L with B and S with B. Okay, so if the field is very strong, then L will interact with B directly, S will interact with B directly. They will process independently around B. Instead of forming a J, L and S separately interacts with B. That is what happens in the case of passion back effect. And this happens when B is very strong. Then the internal coupling will break. L and S separately interacts with B. Okay. So if the field is strong, you can calculate the interaction energy separately for orbital motion and spin motion. GL, ML, mu BB for orbital motion. GSMS, mu BB for spin motion. They are, they, we have to write there separately. And there, is, there will be a small interaction time. Okay. If the field is strong, there will be a small interaction between L and S. And that will give you a small term AMLMS. AMLMS. So, the total energy is ML plus 2 MS because GL is 1, GS is 2. So, if you add these two, you will get ML plus 2 MS mu BB plus a small interaction time AML MS. But if you increase the strength of the field, that is field, when field becomes very strong, you can neglect this last term also and interaction energy becomes ML plus 2 MS into mu BB. So, we will treat these two cases separately. One is strong field, the other one is very strong field. Okay. You consider this transition 2p to 2s. I am not writing 3 by 2, 1 by 2 and all because here we are treating L and S separately, not the resultant J. Okay. So, for 2p term, S value is half, L value is 1. So, possible ML values are 1, 0, minus 1. Possible MS values are plus half and minus half. Since S equal to half, possible MS values are plus half and minus half. Since L equal to 1, ML values possible are 1, 0, minus 1. So, the resultant 6 combinations will be there. 1 with half, 1 with minus half. 0 with half, 0 with minus half. Minus 1 with half, minus 1 with minus half. 6 possibilities. For each of them, I can calculate ML MS. For each of them, I can cal calculate ML plus 2 MS. So, 1 into half, it is half. 1 plus 2 into 1 by 2, that will be 2. So, for each of these pairs, you can calculate ML MS as ML plus 2 MS. For 2S state, S is half, L is 0. So, two possibilities, 0 half and 0 minus half. ML and MS. Okay. So, ML MS is 0 ml plus 2 ms is 1 and minus 1. What is energy? It is ml plus 2 ms into mu bb plus a small interaction of the a ml ms. So, in the first case it becomes 2 mu bb plus a by 2. Second case uh, this ml ms is 0 so it becomes mu bb. Third case ml plus 2 ms is 0 becomes minus a by 2. Fourth case minus a by 2 minus mu bb minus 2 mu bb plus a by 2 mu bb minus mu bb. These are the energies. So, we can write the diagram like this, draw the diagram like this, 2p, it will split into 2 mu bb plus a by 2, 2 mu bb plus a by 2. I will take mu bb this much, okay, this height is mu bb. So, this height is again mu bb, so that makes it 2 mu bb plus a small interaction a by 2, okay, that is this solid line. This dotted line is 2 mu bb. This solid line is 2 mu bb plus a by 2. Okay. Then the next one is at mu bb. This solid line. The next one at uh, minus a by 2. Two lines at minus a by 2. Then at minus mu bb. Then at minus 2 mu bb plus a by 2. Minus 2 mu bb at this dotted line plus a by 2. That is this solid line. Okay. So, Corresponding to 6, these two are equal, so there will be 5 levels. Okay, there are total 6 possibilities, but these two are having equal energy, so there will be 5 levels. 5 levels, and I represented these 5 levels by these 5 solid lines. 5 solid lines for 2s, I have 2 solid levels, 
uh, one at plus mu bb the other one at minus mu bb now the selection rule selection rule delta ml is 0 plus or minus 1 you have to write ml values ms values separately no mj here and delta ml 0 plus or minus 1 delta ms 0 that is the selection rule so from this state you can go to this state because delta ml value is 1 minus 0 it is plus 1 delta ms is half minus half 0 so this is one of the possibility second one is from here to here third one is this one fourth fifth sixth total six transitions are possible total six transitions are possible but among these six two and five have the same energy look at this two and five this two and five at the starting stage there is a difference of two mu bb in the starting position 2 and 5 the difference is 2 mu bb at the ending stage 2 and 5 have the same difference 2 mu bb that means 2 and 5 have same energy no other lines have identical energies only 2 and 5 have same energy that means among six transitions we will have only five spectral lines we will have only five spectral lines so in presence of a strong magnetic field this 2p to 2s transition will split into 5 will split into 5 this is passion back effect what happens if the field is very strong if the field is very strong you can neglect this column mlms there will not be mlms there will not be this plus a by 2 this minus a by 2 and all okay so you can add one more column very strong field then you will not have any AMLMS, you will have only ML plus 2MS into mu BB. So that will be 2 mu BB, mu BB, 0, 0, minus mu BB, minus 2 mu BB, mu BB and minus mu BB. These are the possibilities. So 2P level will split into 5. There is no dotted lines. This one at 2 mu bb, this one at mu bb, this one at 0, minus mu bb, minus 2 mu bb. And 2s will split into 2. One at mu bb, one at minus mu bb. Then according to selection rule, delta ml is 0 plus or minus 1, delta ms is 0. There are 6 possible transitions. There are 6 possible transitions. But 1 and 4 will have the same energy. Because at the starting stage, there is a difference of 2 mu bb between 1 and 4. But the ending stage also there is a difference of 2 mu bb. They are same. 2 and 5 will be the same. 3 and 6 will be the same. So even though there are 6 transitions, you will have only 3 spectral lines. You will have only 3 spectral lines. So this is the case with a very strong magnetic field. Very strong magnetic field. So if you have a 2p to 2s transition in a very weak magnetic field you will get 10 transitions in a strong magnetic field it will reduce to 5 transition in a very strong magnetic field it will reduce to 3 transition okay in a very weak magnetic field 2p to 2s transition will have 10 lines that is anomalous seaman effect in a strong magnetic field that will reduce to 5 that will reduce to 5 in a very strong magnetic field that will reduce to 3. Okay, so this is the effect of external magnetic field on spectral lines. So these are all depends on the interaction of magnetic moment with the external magnetic field and interaction energy you can calculate using these relations. GLML mu BB if there is only orbital motion, GSMS mu BB if there is only spin motion and if there is a total motion or if there is a space for interaction of L and S then there will be a total angular momentum and total magnetic moment then you can have GJ, MJ, mu BB. So using this concept you can calculate the various uh, positions of the spectral lines in presence of magnetic field okay so that's all about the effect of external magnetic field on the spectral lines of atoms thank you